Hi, I'm Patricia Scott with Up Hypnosis Institute, and we're getting ready to do a little free mini webinar. The topic for tonight's webinar is going to be dynamic aging. So we'll see who joins us in just a few minutes here. We do these once a month with a little bit of a different topic every month. And today is October 21st, 2020. So we'll see who joins us and have a great time. Hopefully you'll learn a little bit of something about how powerful the mind is and how you can stay youthful and age dynamically. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Well, I've had a few other people, but you know, we never know who's going to come to these things. So I'm not going to wait around. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had some calls today. Oh, there's somebody that I need, just need to hit admit, I guess. Oh, this is my student. We have an ongoing right now, a, a hypnotherapy certification training. So Sarah is part yeah. of that training. And last weekend, this past weekend, we did a two-day NLP training which she was part of there she is Hi. hello sarah how's it going i'm good so we're gonna go ahead and and get started here because this is a quickie you know this is this is a short free seminar that i do every month now the third wednesday of each month in case you didn't already know that oh there's what is it ellie 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 yeah <laughs> ellie oh god that dog is the cutest little dog look at that That's so good. Oh, instant instant trance here so um <laughs> Yeah, third Wednesday of each month, uh, I call it a free mini webinar because we move pretty fast. And I, my goal always when I do training, mo uh, well, you've all been in classes with me before. So, you know, I, I really, my goal is always to pack as much as possible in the amount of time that I'm given. So I got a couple of people that I guess don't want me to see their face, but that's okay. You know, uh, <laughs> these classes are about giving you more choices. Right. Sarah, sounds familiar from last weekend, yeah. the NLP class. The more choices available to you, the better. And, yep. uh, you know, we all are better if we have more choices. So th that's what this is about tonight. This is an exciting topic, actually. I hadn't thought about doing a seminar on this in a long time. I wrote an article quite a while ago that I'll show you a little bit of. And if, if, if anybody wants me to send you the materials afterwards, just shoot me an email. And uh, I will be happy to email you the materials that I'm showing you here tonight. Uh, the main thing, uh, let me just introduce myself for those of you who may not be as familiar with me. Um, again, Patricia Scott, I go by Patty, and uh, um, I'm the founder and president of Up Hypnosis Institute. The full name of my company is Unlimited Possibilities Hypnosis Incorporated, and I started in Southern California, and about, oh, 18, 17 or 18 years ago, I moved here to the Palm Harbor, Florida area, which is Tampa Bay area of Florida. So, I, and after that is when I started doing trainings. I became a certified uh, master trainer for the International Association of Counselors and Therapists shortly after moving here. And uh, then a, a couple of years after that, I became a life fellow with the International Medical and Dental Hypnotherapy Association. And I now have a medical specialty certification training. Marnie, you were part of that, mm -hmm. that uh, has just within the last few years been approved through the IMDHA, which is the International Medical and Dental Hypnotherapy Association. And uh, so that's a little bit about my background. And um, so uh, this, the topic tonight is dynamic aging. And I love that word dynamic. Uh, when I used to go to a lot of networking groups, uh, the ones that were women's networking groups, you know, where you had a lot of business women that would just tell you about their companies. There were so many that would get up and talk about their anti-aging products. <laughs> and being the linguist, being the NLP, uh, you know, we call them NELPers, being an, an NLP person, which is you study the, the language of the unconscious mind, I kept thinking anti-aging, anti-aging. So I had to be a little bit of a smart aleck. And when I stood up, I said, boy, you know, everybody's here talking about anti-aging. I just want everyone to know I am not anti-aging. <laughs> I am absolutely not. I'm for aging dynamically. <laughs> and they, some of them thought it was funny and others I didn't think thought it was very funny, but oh well, you know, <laughs> keep a sense of humor. You will live longer. I'm sorry, but it's true. So if you laugh and keep a sense of humor when stuff gets crazy, like it is pretty much right now everywhere in the world to some extent or another, if, at the very least, our lives are different than they were a few months ago. Yes, everybody, you yeah. agree with that? Yeah. Yep. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on that can cause you to stress out. And guess what stress does? <laughs> it helps to age. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It, it can cause you to age more because stress, stress is something that is very draining on the physiology, on the emotions, and, and on the mental, your, your mental state. 
and more importantly for what we're going to talk about is your mental state. The mind runs the body. The mind tells the brain what to do. I do. My specialty is medical hypnotherapy. So we were talking about doing uh, oral surgery. Marnie, you were talking about, you know, and when I did my oral surgery a couple of years ago with, with no anesthesia, my mind was telling my brain to release chemic feel good chemicals. I'm not a medical doctor. I know some of the names of all those big, long names they have for all those chemicals in the brain, but I didn't need to know what they were called or what they did. My, my inner mind already knows all that stuff that's available. So I just had to tell it what I wanted it to do, which was make me as comfortable as possible, uh, keep myself distracted uh, with something else in my imagination so that I would be somewhere in my imagination other than sitting in a dental office having surgery. And it worked unbelievably. And it was, it was the most major thing I'd ever done. So the mind is powerful and the mind can tell the brain to release feel good, uh, feel good chemicals into your body. And guess what? They're all natural <laughs> and there's no side effects other than positive ones. You actually feel more empowered and, and better when you have those kind of things. So all of those wonderful feel good chemicals the brain has available, we can, uh, we also use that for pain relief uh, for a hypnotherapist that works with pain. And it's a very amazing thing to be able to do. And the less pain medication you, you have to take, obviously, the healthier it is for your organism. So all of these things the brain can already do. Now, one of my first teachers I'm gonna talk about, uh, it's actually, I just realized the red book behind me there on the second shelf, Dr. Michael Preston, one of, someone that really, I was just so lucky to stumble on him when I first started studying hypnosis. I started in 1992, which was, uh, what, it'll be 29 years in February that I'll be in this field. And before that, I had a 20 year career in show business which I could go on forever about that. So I really feel like I've had a couple of full lifetimes already, <laughs> full careers, and yet they're very, uh, they're very complementary to each other, I found out, because when I was in show business, you use your imagination a lot. And I was actually studying hypnosis and neurolinguistics and all of the things that I'm using now in this field. I was studying them because they helped me to memorize lines. They helped me to stay focused. They helped me to keep my weight under control. All the things that I was using it for back in those days, not knowing I was someday going to actually change careers. So that that's what I've been using it for. And I was sleeping when there's a lot of noise going on around me. All the things that you can do to put yourself in a state that can allow you to perform at your best. That's a pretty nice skill to have in your toolbox, don't you think, for anything in life was one of my first teachers in, in medical hypnotherapy way back in 92. The first thing I did after I got certified as a hypnotherapist is I went to Arizona and started working with Michael, uh, Michael Preston. His, the name of his book, by the way, which is still out there, he is no longer of this world. He died a few years ago. But the, his book is called Hypnosis, Medicine of the Mind. So pretty cool, huh? So, and I, it's funny because I have this in my archives. I've got so much stuff through those 29 years I've been doing this. I didn't even remember I had this article by him on anti-aging. What I did remember, used to talk in his seminars about how at night when he's falling asleep, he's telling the cells in his body that are going to reproduce anyway, because we're constantly regenerating, you know, and cells are dying off and new ones are being created in our body. And he's kind of, he tells them before he goes to sleep to recreate the new cells as when he was 28 years old. Now, he was in his 70s when I started training with him. He was probably 90 or more by the time I moved to Florida and found out he had passed away. So he, he would talk to the cells, to his brain and, and the cells in his body. And we know from the Mayo Clinic and Johns Hopkins and a lot of the medical institutes now, National Institutes of Health, that the body, as far as uh, controlling bleeding during surgeries and from the, the Simonton studies in the 1970s, we also know that people have learned how to talk to their body to be able to literally start to decrease the size of tumors and in some cases actually eliminate them. Now, back in those days and before all this started being more understood by the scientists and all the great machinery we have now where we can scan the mind, the brain, and the body better, they used to just call it spontaneous remission or, you know, just, just it was just coincidence. The person just, it was, it, nobody could explain it. Now we actually can, can see what's happening in the brain 
how it's processing information. And they're using it for a lot of different things. I'll get a little bit more into the science of it in just a little bit. But Michael Preston was my teacher throughout all the years I was in California. I used to go and uh, study all kinds of things with him, immune system, hyp hypnotherapy, medical hypnotherapy, uh, addictions, a lot of different things. And I just want to point out, and I will send you this article if you like, I'm not going to read the whole article to you, but I want you to see what he talked about was that uh, some cells in the body, the cells are constantly, like I said, going away, dying off, and new cells are constantly being formed. Some cells live for four days, he says, and other cells may live for a few weeks, and some cells are designed to live for many months, but each and every cell in the entire body must at some point die, and it must be replaced by another new cell, and this replacement, replacement process is going uh, on all the time during our whole lifetime. Scientists have determined that every cell in the body is replaced at least every seven years. So if you think about it, you're a whole new person. Uh, as far as on a physical level, you're a whole new human being every seven years. So then that begs the question, why don't we stay seven years old? <laughs> you know, why don't we just stay that age? Well, it doesn't quite work that way. <laughs> and little things interfere with the cell replicating with that intelligence of what it's being taught to replicate as. And that what they found and what Dr. Preston found in all of his studies and what he was teaching us in those days was that you can, you can actually talk to the brain and you can have it start to control the cells. A lot of you that have been in seminars with me know I talk about Bruce Lipton a lot. Um, I don't have my handouts from him tonight because it's such a short seminar. But Bruce Lipton was a cellular biologist at Stanford University. He was a professor of cellular biology. And he's gone on to write a book. Uh, the first book he wrote was uh, The Biology of Belief. And, and he talks about how the mind and the body and the cells respond instantly when you think a thought. And if you're holding a belief, the cells literally start acting on those, those beliefs. And that's the mind interacting with the brain and the cells in the body. This is not woo-woo anymore. Like I said, it's science, which is really exciting. So how the body functions depends on what messages the mind is sending to the brain. Like I said, as, as we know, we do change as time goes on. Some people change differently and age seemingly much more quickly than others. So what's that all about? And again, this goes into more detail, but he says the mind sends a message to the brain. The brain processes the thought and causes the body to respond to carry out whatever is dictated by the mind, if it's possible. So if we're, uh, think about your age right now, just in your, in your mind, just sitting here, just think about, you know, what your age is actually. I just had a birthday Monday, so I'm actually, I'll tell you, I'm 69 years old now. And that's what I actually am. And I can tell you, uh, I just, it's funny because on my birthday, someone from my showbiz days coincidentally called me. It was someone I hadn't talked to in 30 years, <laughs> right? I was like, really? On my birthday, he called. He didn't know it was my birthday even. It was just a coincidence. And he was, it turned out it was the last person I did a, a, a theatrical play with. He played my husband in the play. Really sweet guy. So we had a long talk, kept going back and forth. I finally connected with him today. So, so uh, here's the thing, been doing this a long time. So you think about how old you actually are, your age. And now just in your own imagination, think about uh, right now with whatever's going on in your life, how do you feel? How old do you feel most of the time throughout your days? Is it a little more than your age? Is it a little less than your age? Or maybe it's exactly your age. And I'm not gonna ask you because you know, but I want you to consider that if you're feeling a little bit older than your years, then you have been doing something in your mind to cause that feeling because the unconscious mind runs, runs the emotions and it's based on your belief systems and what you're thinking about most of the time. So if you think about something, I'm going to have you all now think about something especially fun or especially just, just something really special, maybe an award you got or a game you won, something that happened when you were a child, like, like maybe before age 15 or 16. So think of some special thing that happened that you still remember. 
And sometimes it's easier to think about it with your eyes closed. So if you'd like to, you could close your eyes for a few seconds and really get into that feeling again, because it's still recorded at the unconscious level. And if, especially if it was a special moment, something that you really accomplished or felt really good about, or that was just really fun, that's okay too. It can be all of the above, preferably. And as you think about that and get into it and remember it, and let yourself kind of be right back in the middle of that experience and just get a little bit back of that feeling of what it was like to be that young and to have that happen, whatever it was. Maybe you can add some sounds that were going on. If there were other people around, maybe you can imagine they're around you. And just the high point of that experience. And as you're recalling and thinking about and hopefully feeling a little of that again, think about how old do I feel right now? And notice how that compares to how old you felt a minute or two ago when I asked you. And just notice how that feels. And then if your eyes are closed, bring that back with you into this seminar, a little bit of that youthful feeling, if that's what you had, hopefully a little of that. And just bring it back here. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how the mind is so powerful. And when you're thinking thoughts that are especially happy thoughts, First of all, your immune system is stronger, you have a better attitude, and you're literally at the cellular level and in the organism that we call our physical body, you are literally stronger on every level. Your digestion is better, everything is healthier within your body, including the cells, when you are in a positive state. So that's a pretty cool thing. And if you created a, a better state just now, just by imagining something good that happened when you were younger, you can do that anytime you want. So when the world isn't cooperating the way we wish it would sometimes, and we're not feeling that good, <laughs> and we start feeling a little bit less than um, productive or powerful or empowered or healthy, then we can send our mind in a better direction. Doesn't mean we ignore what reality is, it just means we can put ourselves in a better place to be resourceful to deal with whatever is going on, whatever is happening that we don't have any control over. So, and again, this is a long article that I will send you if you like, but this is the part I wanted to highlight. Believability, importance, or truth plays no part in the processing of the information by the brain. Those of you that are, some of you I know are trained in hypnosis, and some are in the process of training in hypnosis, and have other training maybe that just makes this make sense to you that when the mind thinks a thought, the conscious mind takes in information, it evaluates it based on what we call in hypnosis filters. The filters are based on everything we've learned up to this moment, everything we've accepted or adopted or were taught, our belief systems, our values, what we think is true or not, all those kind of things. It's being evaluated by all of that in an instant. And then we either accept it or we don't. We might kick it out completely saying that's ridiculous. I'm not going to I'm not going to even consider that idea or if you're really somebody who has a curiosity about learning new things, which I hope you all are, then it's going to process it in the brain if you let it in and it's going to consider if there's something useful or helpful about that for your life because your unconscious knows all about your life and your body and every cell in your body. My friend Art Emmerich from Sarasota, when I showed the video that Sarah was on last weekend for the NLP training, he says, your, your unconscious mind is on a first name basis with every cell in your body. I love that. I love the way that sounds. <laughs> you know, and we can't even conceive of the billions of cells that are in our body. We can't do that with our consciousness. So it's nice to know you have a part of your mind that knows all of that stuff. It knows what you need. It knows what's good for you. So believability of the information is only on the conscious level. That's where we evaluate and judge and critique and analyze. That's our conscious mind, which is more limited. And all the information then is delivered to the brain. And on the sub, on the, this uh, uses the word subconscious, I have interchanged subconscious and unconscious. Then it's programmed in as absolute truth. If you accept it, then your mind takes it in and says, okay, I'll add this to my storehouse of information that I evaluate everything else on. So false statements, unless they're rejected for that person, they, they become true, right? So 
it's only it's only true if we accept it. So back when they thought the world was flat, there were a few people that started getting the impression from watching the stars and the, the way the planets and the stars and the, the moon would move. And they started getting the idea, maybe maybe it's not flat, maybe it's round. And that wasn't accepted for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. So people had to open up their mind to some new ideas and, and change their already held beliefs in order to allow that new information to come in. So while in a state of hypnosis, all bodily functions can be altered, modified, and changed. Again, this is Dr. Preston writing this. At the Institute of Medical Hypnosis, which was his school that I attended many, 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 many times through the years, uh, he says, we have determined that the replacement cell in the human body is in the image and with function of the cell being replaced. This replacement cell, although new, is in likeness and kind of the cell being replaced. How do we change this function? And he says, suggestive therapy is created directing uh, the brain to alter and modify the construction of the replacement cell in the image and with the function of the cell that occupied that space in the body when the body was 20 years of age, or you can pick any age. When, uh, when I took my training with him, he said at night, he tells his body to create new cells like when he was 28 years old. That was the age he picked for whatever reason he had for that. And he was a vibrant, vibrant man well into his, I think it was over 90s, in his 90s when he died. So, and then there's some more there. I think that's all I'm gonna show you on that. If you wanna read the entire article by Dr. Preston, and this was probably, I'm guessing this was probably written by him back in the 1970s, maybe early 80s. Well, I don't know, somewhere in that era. And uh, it's before we had people like Bruce Lipton. It's before we had all these imaging, uh, wonderful imaging devices in the hospitals and places where they can, in, you know, where they can research how the, how the mind is responding to thoughts, to the imagination. So if you'd like to have that article, I will be more than happy to send it to you. Now, on the scientific side, of course, some of you may have heard of psychoneuroimmunology. Yes? Anybody heard of that? Can you all see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, PNI for short. That's the acronym. Everything has to have an acronym. By the way, my school, Up Hypnosis Institute, is up high. That's the acronym for my school. <laughs> so it's, a, it's, oh. it's also an affirmation and a mantra, and it's on my license plate. So, you know. It's around me a lot, and I like that idea of thinking up and everything being up, because when you're up, you can't be down kind of an idea, right? So right. it's a way of uh, forming habits of thinking. So psychoneuro psychoneuroimmunology, uh, of course, for those of you, a lot of you already know this, it's the premise that a patient's medical state influences diseases and healing. If it affects <sighs> disease and healing, I guarantee you, there's PNI, probably, if I took more time, I could find some research in how, on how it also slays, slows the aging project process. Because it has to. If it, if it affects the immune system and diseases and healing, all of that, everything affects everything else. You're also going to be affecting the aging process. So, uh, talks about the origins of PNI. Again, 1970s, a lot of things started happening in the 1970s with mind-body uh, type therapies and mind-body medicine and all that. So neuro-linguistic programming, it, it was uh, created in the 1970s. So we, we started really starting to get a handle on how the mind works and how we have a whole lot more um, effect on the inner workings of our body than we previously had thought. So it talks about bodily systems and it talks about uh, many PNI studies have focused on how stress, hostility, and depression impact the immune system. Think about what's happening right now with the COVID. Uh, if people are already in fear, <laughs> you know, if they're already a little stressed out about something maybe that's happening in their body, and now all of a sudden they're getting a constant bombardment from media and probably social media. I try to stay off it as much as possible, frankly. But, you know, they're getting bombarded with negativity and fear, right? When you're in fear, your immune system gets dep depressed. And when your immune system is depressed, you're more vulnerable to what they're making you afraid of. So it's kind of like a vicious cycle, isn't it? Not that you don't wanna be cautious. And at the same time though, the fear is not really helping the physical body to ward off whatever the, the source of that fear that they're talking about. So it talks about uh, 
Many conditions such as heart disease, osteoporosis, arthritis, delayed wound healing, and premature aging, there it is, are related to stress and negative emotions. Those of us that work in uh, hypnosis and neurolinguistics know that all of the processes are about less stress, having a better general attitude, which gives your emotional state a lift and thus helps you with all of these things and with premature aging. So if you look around at the people you know in your life, I would uh, pretty much most of the time, there's exceptions to everything, of course, but I would most of the time, everything else being equal, if someone has a very negative or angry outlook on life, if you look at them compared to most other people that are about their age, they're gonna look older because negative emotion, especially anger and depression and those things, it's a stressor on the physical body. It, it literally drags you down. And when you're dragged down, your skin is also getting dragged down. Everything else is gonna go with it. So if you think about it, it makes sense. And if you know any people in your life, I, I used to all my life love finding older role models that were you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years older than me. It's not so much that anymore because there aren't that many that are that much older than me anymore, but you get the idea. And I would always find people that were so positive and optimistic and full of life. And it helped me because I'd say, I want to be like that. I want to be like, have that kind of an attitude when I get, you know, to be their age. And it's, and it really gave me kind of a, a preparation. It gave my mind direction. And remember, your mind is always listening and it's going to start acting out on wherever your thoughts go. So it talks about many doctors have noted um, that patients desire to get well is related to the outcome of a disease. They've known this for a long time before they had things like cellular biology to prove it. Uh, clinical anecdotes recent recount cases of miraculous healing for no demonstrable reason. And also people, I've had this happen with people I've worked with with cancer, where they end up staying alive well past when the doctor said they were supposed to be gone because they had something in their life they were waiting for before they were ready to go. Maybe somebody getting married, maybe somebody coming in from out of town that they wanted to see one more time before they leave the earth. And they will will themselves with their mind to stay longer than the doctors thought was possible. And this happens a lot more than people realize. So the ancient Greek physician Galen wrote, he cures most successfully in whom the people have the most confidence. In hypnosis, we talk about a ritual and congruity. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. And when somebody is, when, is guiding you through a hypnotic process for something like health or aging uh, dynamically, I like that word, then you know you have to trust them and you have to have confidence in them in order to allow them to uh, into, so to speak, past your conscious, logical, judgmental mind enough so that they can help you to learn how to communicate with your unconscious mind. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and the placebo effect, the actual incidence of the placebo effect is, dif is difficult to measure, but some researchers believe it's as many as one third of all patients that will improve with the placebo effect. So wow. what is that? That's your imagination, just considering that you might get better with whatever they're giving you, even though you don't know for sure if it's the actual medication or if it's a placebo. So think about how powerful that is. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. And then it talks about cancer, biofeedback, psychotherapy, and then um, psychoneuroimmunology, just, uh, just as why it's so important to what we're talking about. It provides a scientific framework. It's a field of study. The scientific framework for research is to investigate the aspects of healing that go beyond standard clinical therapy. PNI researchers look for the physical links that allow the immune system to respond to physiological, psychological factors, such as the will to live to a certain date. They look at all the mental ways the mental states, such as hopelessness, can signal the immune system to lower the body's defenses. Now, of course, this is medical ease, so they're going to go toward the negative. But if you believe that it weakens the immune system, and lowers the body's defenses, then if you turn that around and have a positive outlook and think in a healthy way, guess what? Then you're gonna have a stronger immune system and, they, and it's been proven. And your body's defenses will be stronger, thus you will have a, a better, more dynamic aging ability and age more slowly as far as on a physiological 
level and emotional, because again, they all go together. So if you'd like that article, I think that's the end of the article. Oh no, there's more. <laughs> uh, I won't go through all of this with you. Happy people live longer. People who hold anger give themselves cancer. There you go. Uh, mm -hmm. Discovering how the immune system communicates with the neurological and endocrine systems. So again, this is all the all the medical talk <laughs> and all the stuff that those people study and understand now show what is happening in the brain and in the physical body that is making these things happen. They knew they were happening before, but now we actually have the machinery and the, and the instruments and the scanning devices to actually observe it, to observe it. So there you go. And I think that's about it. And then it has all the references down there. I'm gonna stop sharing that. And just get back to these people that I'm seeing and ask if anybody has a question at this point. Because you know, this is a this is a quickie. This is a quickie seminar, <laughs> webinar, excuse me. I'm just Gotta curious, um, when you were training with the doctor, when he was saying that about his cells every night, is it, are we talking five minutes a night and this would be enough to get these effects or is this something that's much more involved? Okay. My, my answer to whether what he said he does is I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I just remember he said he did it every night. Uh, my answer from the standpoint of my work and my studying for the last 29 years, and well, 20 years before that I was studying it too, but since I've been in this field, mm -hmm. is that it doesn't have to be a long extended thing. Now, if you really want to make a project out of it, you could make recordings like you said you did when you did your dental work mm -hmm. and play it at night while you're sleeping. Right. Uh, I, I would say five minutes is more than enough. Mm. I would say probably one minute or a few sentences that you, a mantra that you repeat before you send yourself off to sleep every night would be enough. Because as we drift off to sleep, remember, we're drifting through the brainwave state that is that light hypnotic brainwave state. And that's when we're very suggestible and the 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 door is opening, so to speak, to our unconscious creative imagination as we're drifting off and letting go of more of the stuff that was going on all day long or whenever we go to sleep. And as that channel opens to the unconscious, we can feed information in just a few sentences, just two or three mantras that you say the same thing every night to send it in that direction. Because they've shown, sleep studies show whatever you're thinking of as you drift off through that brainwave state and go to sleep, your unconscious mind takes off with. Mm -hmm. that's why if somebody's very stressed we say don't watch the news right before you fall asleep some people fall asleep mm -hmm. with the news on watching the news that's very because your unconscious doesn't ever sleep we know that now it's very active it's it's running the body it's keeping your heart beating it's giving you dreams even if you don't remember them you know it's doing all kinds of things but it's processing what your what was on your mind the last thing as you're drifting off when i was in show business i used to tell my mind to work on uh, things, creative things. When I was writing songs, I'd say, you know, finish this song for me while I'm sleeping. <laughs> mm -hmm. getting, I'm getting stuck on this, you know, creative block. You can, you can memorize, uh, memorize things in your sleep. You can do all kinds of things in your sleep because your unconscious never sleeps. And it's got a lot less distraction and stress on it because your conscious mind isn't paying attention to all the things going on and evaluating and making judgments about it and saying, oh, this is bad or this is terrible or that's going to take a long time. Or, you know, I'm starting to get old. Look at that. Oh, I got a line there, you know. So think about what you look for, too. That's another point I wanted to bring up tonight. When you look in a mirror, think about what you're looking in the mirror uh, focused on. Are you always focused on the things that you wish weren't the way they are? <laughs> or that you would like to be different? Because that's like sending your unconscious mind a kind of little, kind of a, kind of a insult, if you will. It's insulting yourself. It's expecting in the world of hypnosis, we know how the mind works. What you focus on is your unconscious. What you focus on most of the time is what your unconscious keeps trying to make happen. So if you're always focusing on looking for lines on your face, guess what are going to start appearing even faster than they would have? The unconscious is going to start making that happen. Now that is not woo-woo. That is, that is science now. We know this. So if you're looking in the mirror, look at the things, focus on the things that you like, and think about them the way you'd like them to be even more that way, <laughs> right? When I was working on fixing my eyesight, some of you that have been in rooms with me before, you know that I, uh, many years ago, well, now it's, it's been about 
18, 19, 20, about 21 years ago when I started working on my eyesight and I was wearing glasses and I got the impression from someone else that I heard fix their eyes with hypnosis. And three years later, I stopped wearing glasses and that's been 18 years ago now. And what I did was I just kept, I realized I had had a very negative attitude toward my glasses because I didn't like wearing them. And every time I thought about my eyes, I was in a negative state. That's not a very good way to have your eyes get better. <laughs> and since I had already started studying hypnosis, I said, oh my gosh, this is not good. So I immediately changed my attitude. And in a waking state, I just kept, every time I thought about my eyes, I just talked to my brain and my body. And I said, do what you can, uh, you know, getting stronger every day. And I just, I just stepped aside and had trust. And three years later, I didn't have to wear glasses. I didn't know they were going to get that much better. So sometimes we, we just interfere with our logical judgmental mind that might have taken in some information from someone like the eye doctor who said at that time, well, you know, when you're over 40, what, blah, 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 right? Your eyes are going to just start getting weaker. And I remember later I said, wait a minute. I know people in their 70s that have never had to wear glasses. What's with that? <laughs> so that statement doesn't have to be true about every single person. So I just gave it a chance to work on it to see what would happen. And it surprised me. It did more than I thought was possible. So sometimes you don't even have to really believe it's possible, like the placebo effect. When someone gets that little inert pill during a study, they just want to feel better. So they're hoping it's the real thing. And then, like they said, a third or more of the people get better with just an inert substance because they were at least hoping. They weren't positive it was the real thing, but they, they at least had a little hope and positive expectation. So if a little bit can go that far, then what can a lot do? That's what, I, that's what I'm spending my life studying. How much more can I do if I can go through oral surgery with no anesthesia, if I can fix my eyesight, you know, and all the other things that you all have heard that I've done and that, and that I read about that other people do, because that gives me faith. When I see if, if somebody else can do it, you can learn to do it if you so desire, right? And since I'm a hypnosis trainer, it's, it's important to me that I walk the walk and, and, you know, work on myself when I have the opportunity. There's always something that can be better, right? So uh, dynamic aging is, is a focus that's gotten a little bit more important the last uh, decade or so for me. <laughs> and with, uh, you know, 70 looming now, <laughs> you know, 363 days from now, my brain <laughs> is like, okay, I'm going to start getting ready now so that when I turn 70, I plan to be in even better shape than I am now. And, and, you know, and just get ready for it. Just start planning, set a destination in hypnosis. We know your mind needs to know what are you asking it to do? I'm asking it to right now, moving forward, prepare me so that I'm healthy and fit, more healthy and more fit than I am now on October 19th, 2021. Now it knows what I'm asking. And all I have to do is keep supporting it with positive expectations and when something isn't the way I want it to be, don't let it, you know, sidetrack me too far. You, you can't ignore reality, and I won't ignore reality. But I'm certainly not going to put more heavy stuff on top of something that I'm not happy about by giving it more power. And uh, does that make sense to anybody? Absolutely. So did any of you that I can see when you thought about something cool and fun and happy that happened when you were or that you accomplished when you were younger? How many of you, when I said, how do you feel, how old do you feel right now? How many of you felt younger? Just for that moment that you were thinking about it. Yeah? yeah? All of you that I can see. And if, if you played along, because it's all in your imagination, mm -hmm. that should hopefully give you a little preview of the power of your imagination. If you can feel that young for a few seconds just by bringing up a memory, then you can feel that young all the time. Mm right? Yep. Because you did it. I didn't do anything to you. Hypnotists don't do things to people. They just, they just offer possibilities. I love that word, you know. And the possibilities truly are unlimited in your creative mind. There's right. things we'll be doing. I guarantee there'll be things 10, 20 years from now we'll be using hypnosis for that right now, if you said it out loud, people would laugh and say, that's not possible. But how many people, you know, 50 years ago thought we could use hypnosis. Well, actually 50 years ago, they were using it for anesthesia. And then they, you know, came up with the chemicals and they said, it's easier, just give me a shot or whatever. Yeah. But 
but it, to know that you can do something sometimes just takes a little bit of uh, curiosity is a great way to approach this stuff. And I love, I love, you know, working on something new, a new project. I call them projects. So um, if your mind runs your body, which it does, and many people uh, have written books about focusing on certain parts of the body that were ill or diseased and actually mentally help them get better, like the Simonton cancer studies in the 1970s, well-documented. They were doctors. They were doing creative visualization, they called it in those days, and having Pac-Men come in and eat the cancerous tumors. It's like, what? What's that about? You know, everybody must have, some people must have thought that Carl Simonton was crazy, but he was a doctor and people had nothing to lose because guess what? They were being told they, they could do nothing more and they were probably going to all die in six months. So they went ahead and they thought, let's give it a shot. You know, I'll try anything. <laughs> and voila, the, off the charts, they were healing themselves. So what's with that? There's something going on there. That gets me excited about what else might be possible. An article I wrote many years ago that I think is relevant for today. There you go. Aging, it's all in your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd like all that stuff. There you go. Uh, so just send me an email and I will, I will send you all the handouts, everybody. And uh, I wrote this years ago, but I read through it today. Oh, there's Bruce Lipton. I knew I had to talk about him in there and his studies at Stanford, talking about altering the DNA. That got some people's attention. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so here, yeah, this statement here says it all. We move in the direction of our most dominant thoughts. So think about what you think about all the time and think about how you think about it. Are you thinking of it in a positive, forward moving, good direction? Or are you thinking about it in a negative direction that's bringing you down and making you feel bad? And we call it hmm. reframing in this field. You know, you can always turn some, you don't have to ignore reality, but you can turn around how you think about it so that it feels a little better. Maybe that's the best you can do. Like uh, this COVID thing, I, I'm, I'm finding all kinds of opportunities in the situation with COVID. One of the opportunities that I didn't even expect is I'm, I'm ending up finding a lot of time to get better at using Zoom. <laughs> Because everything's been on Zoom since all this started. I've done whole conferences on Zoom. So, you know, yeah. there any 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 challenge in your life, and by the way, if you call it a challenge, your cells respond a whole lot better than if you call it a crisis. So, you don't want to, you know, you want to stay away from that crisis word. And it's, you know, you can be talking about the same thing. It's all in how you represent it for your mind and your body. So if you just think of it as a challenge, and this is something I can't control that part of it, but I can control what, what can I do with it? What can I do with all this extra time that I have at home? <laughs> right? What, what yeah, can it's I an opportunity. Bring? Opportunities. That's right. And that, that's yeah. why I said that word possibility. There's possibilities embedded in every challenge. You just have to, you know, hit pause for a minute and not listen to all of the incoming fear mongering. And say, okay, here's what I don't have control over and I have to deal with for whatever length of time. Where do I have my power? What can I do to take advantage of the situations that are being created that wouldn't be there other than if this was happening? And it opens it opens mm -hmm. up your creative mind to search for creative things to do with, with what's happening. And it, it makes it a lot more healthy at the cellular level, which means you're going to look younger. Because, you know, yeah. I, I decided years ago that learning hypnosis and neurolinguistics makes you younger and younger and younger. Uh, I had a real, uh, I, put, I put an affirmation that I created many, many years ago. It was right about the time I was switching careers and a lot of things in my life were kind of going haywire. And I was kind of flailing around, not quite sure what I was supposed to be doing. And I had a couple of in-between jobs that were getting me, you know, into this field that were very, very negative, had a lot of negative people around me and some very unhealthy atmosphere. So I created this mantra all of a sudden. And, and it said, this is what I read every morning when I woke up and I said, I would read this and I had it on my mirror. I said, today brings wonderful and unique experiences and opportunities that will never happen again. Be here now. And that's, I just yeah, said every that every day, morning. Every day. 
That's how I started my day because I was it. I was getting, and I'm not, I'm usually an up person anyway, but there was, there was a one after another things that started piling on and I found myself kind of getting down. So that really brought me back up by, by focusing on that. Cause you move in the direction of your dominant thought. And right. that's what really helped me get through uh, that challenging time. And this also talks that's a little cool. bit more, talks a little bit more about reframing. Uh, if right. you think a thought and, and you don't feel good when you think the thought, kind of the, the shortcut key is uh, flip it over. What's the opposite of what you were thinking? It'll probably be the thing that makes you feel better. <laughs> Doesn't oh, work yeah. exactly that way for everything, but it's, it's, a good, it's a good starting point. It's a good rule. So, yeah, reframe yeah. just means how can I think about it so it doesn't feel so bad? <laughs> Sometimes that's the best you can do. <laughs> I may still not feel great, but at least I feel like I've got some kind of something going on. And I can get resourceful on how I'm going to get through this that everybody else is calling a crisis, right? And right. you will be, and you will be healthier then. And that's the whole key because it's all in your mind. And if your mind is focused on possibilities and how can I get through this in the most resourceful, healthy way, your mind will help you find ways to get through it that are healthier and more resourceful because your unconscious mind runs the body and it wants you to feel better. It always wants you to feel better. So how can we find out what like a library of your Zoom recordings and or? Uh, you can go to the uh, go to YouTube and if you type okay. in Patricia Scott Hypnosis, Okay. Uh, I have a channel, but everything's kind of spread out. I don't have everything on just one channel. So if you okay. if you type in on YouTube in the search Patricia Scott Hypnosis, you'll you'll somewhere in the big list you'll see a whole bunch of my stuff from all right many many years. And I've been doing a lot of them lately. So there's one uh -huh. on meditation, mindfulness, and hypnosis that I did a few months ago for this free webinar that turned out really nice. You might enjoy that if you're interested in those things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was talking yeah. about the talking about the, the way they compare and similarities and stuff. Okay, well, thank you. It's great to see all of you.